Welcome back to Living Out Loud. This is Susan Karp, the Executive Director of the Arlington Council on Aging. And today, we're going to give new meaning to move over. See you in a few. Welcome back. Let's stop for a moment and look around. Look at your living room. Look at your kitchen. Look at your bedroom. Are there things that are accumulating? Are they accumulating and then becoming unsafe in your house, which could be a fall hazard? Or are you thinking about the possibility of moving, downsizing? Maybe you want to move closer to your family. Maybe you've decided that your 3,000 square foot home is too big for you anymore and you want just a condo. It may seem overwhelming. Well, today I've got a guest, Deb Stone, who's a co-owner of Ship Shape Organize. Now, before we begin in introducing Deb, I always let you know that our programs in the Council on Aging are for information purposes only. So I'd like you to be listening to see the kinds of things that Deb is involved with and see how that might apply to your life and how a company that's like Shipshake Organize might be able to assist you. So now I turn it over to Deb. Deb, welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us here on the set of Living Out Loud. Um, why don't we begin in talking a little bit about you and how you got involved in uh, creating this company that you run? Well, I've always loved living a simple life, but I really did it. And I lived on a boat for two years with my family. Oh, my. So as you can imagine, we all had one suitcase. I cooked pretty gourmet meals without a KitchenAid mixer, without a coffee pot, with a few utensils. And life was simple and life was freeing. And I came back, and when you come back to land, sometimes Amazon packages are on everybody's front doorstep, and we realize how many things we have, and I tried to bring that simple way of life back to my own house, and then it just was a natural progression to start a company and helping others. Oh my goodness, so you went from a home that was roughly 4,000 square feet. And the boat? Ooh, I don't know. It was small. It was small. <laughs> <laughs> and how many did you have on that boat? There were five of us. Five. So. Well, and you were all still speaking to one another after? Loved each other all that much more. Oh, that's wonderful. So, that's yeah. wonderful. That really must have been a challenge, going from having everything in, in a lovely home with probably a bedroom for each child, and you're coming into a boat. Talk to us about, I mean, what was it like after the honeymoon period was over? It, the honeymoon period, to be honest, kept going. The problem was when I brought the kids home for a little part of the time, yeah. then they didn't want to go back to the boat. <laughs> oh, I see. I see. Um, but they learned to be creative and play with less, and they made magical people out of latex gloves, and we had puppet shows, and so um, it was a... Uh, a great experience. Good, good. So you were back and you moved back into your home, mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming. And so how did you actually, how did you transition from, from being a boat person? From being a boat person. Well, everybody went off. So the kids went off to school. Mm -hmm. My husband went off to work and mm -hmm. I found myself sitting in the kitchen missing my family terribly. Um, but what I tried to do was not over schedule the afternoon activities for the children. Mm -hmm. Um, have that quality family time, yeah. um, and I really simplified my home. I went through my attic and thought, why am I really keeping this? Do I use it? Do I love it? And um, I started the process in my own home. Mm -hmm. So for you, it sounds like that was a fairly easy transition between looking at what you had and downsizing when you were mm -hmm. in your mm -hmm. current home, sure, um, or at that time. So how do you help folks um, with your business? So you started this business yes. and you are a co-owner, so you've got another partner. Yes. And you obviously um, partner with other companies. So what other companies do you partner with? So when we go into a client's home, we um, take a look around mm -hmm. and then depending on the scenario, we can bring in antique appraisers, consignment stores, donation companies, junk haul to make it an easy process um, and to try to get them the most money for their items that they no longer want. 
Okay, so you are coming in and you're reviewing everything and you're giving the customer a plan. Yeah. So how do people find you? A lot from referrals and a lot from our website. Okay, so are you finding that seniors come to you or do you find that their adult children are coming to you? A lot of times the adult children reach out to us because as you know, families are busy. Mm -hmm. Adult children often are both working and they have their own children and sometimes they just know that mom or dad needs some help. Right. So that's where we kind of come in. Um, and see what we know also is that and you and I are both adult children, so I'm speaking very candidly, is that we sometimes as adult children can be the evil empire to our parents. And I say that, I say that lovingly and I say that a little bit of a joke because we find that as adult children, sometimes we, we weigh in on our parents' lives yes. when we're not always welcomed to weigh in. Yes. Um, now, this, our audience knows sometimes, I use my father as an example and he's, he doesn't watch the show. He always asks if he gets some <laughs> revenue from the show because he knows I mention him. But, but contemplating downsizing, mm -hmm. downsizing could mean, and help me with, with the understanding mm -hmm. here, but it can either be where you're selling your belongings and going or you're reorganizing yes. the things yes. um, that are in your home that make it a clearer and cleaner environment, cleaner being visually clear, as well as removing what I would be rem remiss in that saying is our fall, fall obstacles. Right. Um, obstacles. So um, I would like to focus on, on how you bring everybody to the table in a discussion. Because mm -hmm. as I said, sometimes the evil empire, which mm -hmm. are the adult children, um, are making these suggestions and they aren't necessarily welcomed by yes. uh, mom and dad. Yes. And I can appreciate that because I have that dynamic in my family. I would think that you would be not telling the truth if you said you never experienced that in your family. Um, so how do you how do you help everybody understand? So I tell everyone we're kind of the neutral advocate, mm -hmm. and the we are being an advocate for the client. Okay. So even if the adult child hires us and mm -hmm. they're paying us sometimes, our clients are the people that we are working with in the home and they are ultimately the ones that are making the decisions. Okay. Yet with that same in that same venue, you know, there are certain issues that the adult children would like to weigh in on. What would they like possibly mom and dad to keep for them okay. later in life? Okay. Um, what they value. Um, and they also are with the parents during the holidays, so they might see, hey, mom, last time you cooked Thanksgiving dinner, remember? You had to have me get up on that step stool to get the platter. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a discussion. Right, so the conversations are different between um, when you are brought into a home to try to reorganize. So you're walking into a kitchen, what are some of the things that you're seeing and what are some of the things you're asking and, and having a conversation with the senior? So the first thing is to determine what they use every day and those items should be accessible. Um, they shouldn't be getting up on a step stool to reach a platter. Um, right. And heavy items should be on a lower cabinet that they just lift up Mm -hmm. the, for example, the crock pot or the right. KitchenAid mixer. Mm -hmm. um, but the everyday dishes should be accessible near the dishwasher. Yeah. Easy to unload your dishwasher and put it in a cabinet. You're not reaching over and awkwardly around the dishwasher. Mm -hmm. um, so things like that. And, you know, everybody has too much of certain things in their kitchen. That's true. I, I think coffee mugs. Yes. I, I think about my cabinets. I think about my friend's cabinets. and. So how many coffee mugs do you have, Susan? Well, I, with my children now, the adult children harping in on me, um, I have less around, so I have about six coffee mugs. So I'm, I'm maybe, kudos to you. I'm ahead of the <laughs> curve there in this conversation. I'm not sure I'll venture onto other ones, but. You are. Yep. Most people have 
35 to 40 coffee mugs and every coffee mug has a story mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. you know a WBR a every every time years ago right yeah. WBR you would yeah. be giving your hundred dollar donation and you would get a mug so yes. we had WBR mugs yes um, you're right or They're, places that you went you might bring a souvenir back or somebody gave it to you mm -hmm. but maybe you only really use four or six right and then the others can either be let go of or put on a higher shelf okay um, to make room for other things right and you know you did make a point about um, stepping on a stool to get to something yeah. so I had a conversation the other day with an individual that was in our office and um, I don't know how we got onto the topic I think because she had a shoulder injury and mm -hmm. and she couldn't lift her her arm right beyond this right. and she was um, she was beyond surgery in, in her particular situation and I said, well, how do you get to things? I said, please don't tell me you're stepping on a stool. And she goes, well, I have to step on a stool. Right. And all I could think about is stepping on a stool, even though I'm sure her stool was very sturdy, right? Mm -hmm. Trying to reach up. And I said, and I did make a comment to her. And I said, have you ever thought of reorganizing your kitchen? Yes. Um, to get things on a lower thing. So yes. you're right, and it's, it's just all, you know, coming into play here. So, no, so that's, that's really very important when you start thinking about where you are. I mean, if you have osteoporosis, right. you could be, you could have been 5'7", and now you're 5'5". Five five. I have somebody who's moving, and she must be four and a half feet, and she's having all her cabinets lowered. Right. So she can access them. Right, so she's, so she's making her home um, more accessible to herself. Yes. Um, and that's great news because we really encourage people to live in their homes as long as they're able. Mm -hmm. um, every person makes a decision that fits their life and lifestyle, right. whether that includes taking into consideration the adult child that comes in and makes a suggestion, or whether you're just like, you know what, I've had enough of the house. It's taking right. too much of my energy to do. Right. Um, so what if we moved on into something like a living room? What are you, you know, when your eyes are going so, through the living room? Living room, there, there are two things. From a safety standpoint, mm -hmm. you might want to look at your rugs. Do you have area rugs? Are they tripping hazards? Um, sharp corners on coffee tables, things like that. Mm -hmm. If you're moving, it's a little bit of a different scenario because anyone that comes into your home wants to envision themselves in your home. So all those lovely, lovely trinkets and tchotchkes that we all have, whether mm -hmm. it be Hummel figurines or collections, right. you know, those are important to you, but those really should be boxed up and put away so that when a prospective owner comes and walks through, they're seeing the house and the room for what it is. Okay, so those, so in this conversation, now we're talking about two different things. So we're talking about um, the fall safety hazards. Mm -hmm. So that's a piece of what you do, is you yes. come in and you assess the area. Yes. Um, and it's not unusual that we had the couch and the two or three chairs in the living room, and then we had the, the coffee table, and then you've got the lamp over here, but some of the older homes have lamps, um, you know, lights in the ceiling. Right. Not so much in the newer construction. Right. And when that lamp goes out, then you can't see as well, then you might have the lamp with a cord. I mean, the list goes on and on. Right. So you also assist with that. You make the evaluation of the space sure. to make it more manageable in terms of reducing fall hazards um, and just a little feng shui in there mm -hmm. that maybe instead of the, the the couch with the three chairs. Um, one may be a rocker, one may be a swivel, but to reduce it to what you need for your life at this time. So we have that piece to it. Right. And then we have the piece in prepping the home um, with the idea that you might be selling your home and moving. You've got the piece of what you keep and what you, what you keep, give away, and donate. Well, give, Don giveaways, donate, right. or right. give we, to kids, or whatever. Right, right. and we can mm -hmm. talk a little bit more yeah. about how you go about that. Mm -hmm. But the other piece is, and I'm just going to ask, if you know where the person is moving, are you able to then take the measurements to help them with the idea of how it will fit into their new? Yes, and um, we work with one independent living community, and they have somebody on site that does all the floor plans, okay. and a lot of those communities do have somebody um, do the floor plans so that the client knows right. what they can fit in and what they can't. Right. Um, but this is the piece of the conversation that 
no, nobody really, I shouldn't say nobody, it's not something that comes to mind because I think you made a comment earlier about when you go into your home, you want to feel like it's your home. Yeah. So I just remember when my father transitioned from his retirement home into where he is now, mm -hmm. um, is that he was picturing his 1,800 square foot contents. Right moving into 900 square feet. Which just can't happen. Right, and, right. And, and walls sometimes. are configured so, yeah. so when you have the, prof when you have working with a professional staff um, mm -hmm. at the independent, mm -hmm. um, giving you floor plans and whatever, yes. that's great because corners, I always say that you're buying furniture for the space that you're living in. And that, <laughs> and that may not move with you. Right. Um, conversely. But there's more than just the furniture. It's the boxes. And on move-in day, the boxes can go down the corridor Yeah. if somebody hasn't really been realistic about their new space and right. what they can take. Right. And I have one client, and I interviewed her for a segment we did, and I said, you know, do you miss not bringing anything like your waffle maker or your KitchenAid? And she said, I must admit, if we have waffles, I buy them frozen. <laughs> so... So she's adapted her she's life around being realistic. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. um, and that's an important piece of the puzzle. Yeah. So when you're helping people sort through, how do you, how are the piles? How do you help them organize their so thoughts? So typically we go room by room mm -hmm. and we, we say, you know, is this a keep or a question mark at this particular juncture in time? Yeah. Or you're really okay with letting it go? Mm -hmm. um, and we always tell clients that there's someone on the other end of that donation who is going to love it. And That's we a had great way one to frame it. woman who was having trouble letting go of some of her clothes. Mm -hmm. And she said, okay, I'm going to make up this imaginary friend called Mary. And as she was going through her closet, she said, Mary is starting her first job interview. She is going to love this outfit. So if you really think that it's going to somebody who wants it and needs it, yeah. that helps. Um, that really, that, that's an awesome way of describing it because mm -hmm. that helps with that transfer of ownership. Right. Um, because I found that in downsizing when the kids, when my kids were leaving home college and, es and establishing their own, um, I took the time and the things that they were no longer using, I tried to pair it with someone mm -hmm. who could use it. Right. And it's the and same it makes idea. you feel better. Right. You know, I didn't really think of it that way, but that, that's exactly yeah, you it. You want your items to go to right. somebody who will enjoy right. them and appreciate them. Um, Just so, so that you know, my grandmother's it. china mm -hmm. is still wrapped up in the box that it was sent to me 10 years ago and it's okay. in my basement. I cannot let that so. go. I will be honest with you. So you're going to have people like me that would not let go of the grandmother's china. So I would say to that... What was the intention of grandma's gift to you? Well, it was actually, it went to my mother, and then my mother and father were downsizing their house. And, and then it, I because I'm like, wait a minute, I started, I started receiving all these boxes. do you love it? I love the memory of it. You love the memory of and it. So that's an important thing to recognize the difference between the item and the memory. Right. Right. And then wanting to pass it to one of my three children. I have two boys and a girl. They're where they are in their life and where they are just in their age cohort. The value of grandma's china, my grandmother's china, mm -hmm. their great grandmother, mm -hmm. and this is no disrespect to my, my grandmother or how they view it. Right. They don't, it's not the same connection to them. Right. And so, therefore, it sits in my basement because there's going to be some time I just pull it out and use it. I, which would be great. And that was the intention. Grandma would want you to use right. it but there's and also, enjoy it. Right. But there's also a time in this discussion how you help someone transition between the things that we love, whether it's the WBR mug that says Carp DM, right? right. It, you right. know, it, just, it has no relationship to my last name other than my name is on the mug. It's gone now, by the right. way. Right. Good. <laughs> or, or the mug that has the picture. I mean, how can you, how can you get rid of Johnny or Susie because you've got too many mugs in your house? I feel like it's like throwing their favorite picture away. Right. But, but these are the transitions. So the buckets, the or the, de, the 
cl uh, clutter busters? Clutter culprits. Oh, clutter culprits. So yes. if we can talk a little bit about that and how, okay. how we can address that, because we all have it. We all have it. Even for those of us that, that have downsized for a couple of years. So Right. So we always tell people, do your items own you or do you own the items? Let's say that again. So do you own the item or does the item own, own you. you? So a lot of people are so bogged down by the stuff mm -hmm. in their home. Mm -hmm. And that's where I feel like the stuff is owning them. It's, it's becoming yep. a pressure and a distraction to their daily life yep. versus we own the item. We have the power to say, you know, does that bring me joy? Yeah. Um, or can I, you know, do without it? So, and we'll always have the memory even without the item. Well, I can see that you've navigated a number of so, these conversations before. Yes. So when you first enter a home, um, how long from start to finish? Well, I guess it, I guess it depends. That's so if, a hard question. If you're being called in or retained um, to help reorganize the home for safety. Mm -hmm. So you have an initial visit, you create a plan, yes. and then you work on having your client, your customer, the senior, um, agree with your plan. Well, it's the not my plan, it's our plan. Our plan, okay. Right? Okay, that's right. So it's working with Good the point. senior to determine what they use, what they like. Maybe they have bookshelves that are just crammed with books that they no longer really care about. Yeah. And they'd rather have their figurines decoratively displayed yeah. on that bookshelf. Mm -hmm. So it's just going room by room and, and taking a look at, as we said before, safety okay. concerns. So then you, you come in and you bring a crew in and it's done in one day? Do you take a week? No, typically in that scenario, it's mm -hmm. working one-on-one -on -one with a client. Okay. Um, if, if it's a move, it's a different scenario because mm -hmm. it involves a lot of packing, but if it's just organizing a home, it's really a one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So, do you find is and the seniors there while you're your seniors client? has to be there because okay. they're the only ones that can make the decision okay. as to whether they like something or what they use. Okay. Um, we find that four hours is just kind of the time that we should be leaving. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of decision making. Right. Right. Um, and they're done at that point. They I they are happy too. to see us leave. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> And when you're coming in to help with the actual downsizing, so downsizing, um, we're going to just from where you're wanting to basically move from your home mm -hmm. into another home. Okay, so that is a, a huge daunting task for many. They might have lived in their home for 47 years, right. collected 47 years right. of things. Right. Maybe they raised their family there, their children's things mm -hmm. are, may still be there. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of decision making. And um, we tell clients every potential owner, buyer, is going to open every closet and mm -hmm. built-in cabinet and take mm -hmm. a look. Mm -hmm. And if there are a lot of things in that closet, the house is going to scream, no storage. Yeah. Right? right. But if you open a closet and it's just coats in there, right, and, and maybe hats and mittens, mm -hmm. then that's you know a different a different scenario. Right. So that could act. That's really the first part of the process is that you're wanting the person to take a look at their home um, and start in your boxes. Your what is? It? Usually we have three boxes going, okay. and it's you know things that you want to. Keep, keep, but maybe not need in the next year while your house is being shown. So, for example, those Well, in Arlington, it's shown for probably a few days and gone. So there you <laughs> go. Okay. So you can pack up your trinkets yeah. to go to your new place and take yep. pictures. If yep. they were in a curio cabinet, yep. take pictures so you can recreate it on the yep. other end. Oh, that's an excellent right? idea. Make it feel or if you're like needing, home. Or if you're needing to package that up and give it to a family member, or if you need to package it up and sell it to an antique, or some other dealer, yes. you still have your visual of the things that you had that were yes. important to you. And I also tell people when they do that, because a lot of clients will say, oh, my kids might like that. 
Well, set everything out on a table. Yeah. Take a picture of it. Send it to your kids. Yeah. And yeah. see what they say. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Because you don't want to ship a box to Arizona. Right. For something that might not be used or appreciated. Right. So really, on on the downsizing piece, you come in and you do your your preliminary cleaning out or separating into your different categories. Yes. Whether it's one or two cups or whether it's a whole right. um, you know, dining room table full of, of things. Right. Mine are in the basement, and, not on the dining room table. But and then you're coming back when the house is sold, right? Mm -hmm. And you're coming to finish pack getting things packed up and moved. Correct. So at that somewhere along the line, you have some sense of um, what's going based on where they're moving because not all of your moves are in Massachusetts. I'm sure some of the moves that you coordinate are out of state. Correct. Um, because I find that sometimes when our seniors are moving, yes, they can be moving closer to family in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. or it's not unusual that families are geographically challenged and they're actually moving to an entirely different state. Right. So a company such as yours can do both in the sense of let's make sure your home is as safe as you possibly can be so that you can stay here until you don't want to stay here anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's looking at, at just living space and, and the right. functionality of that space. Right. Right. So we're not talking installing grab bars. No. We're talking about organizing things almost like an occupational therapist would, would take a look. You know, and they'll feel a lot better right. after doing it. And you know right. what? I also tell people if you don't do it, A, do it as a gift to yourself. Right. But B, sometimes think about it as a gift to your children. I had one client that I worked with and she said, you just have to come over and help me with the boxes in the basement. And we went down there yeah. and there were truly 30 boxes from her mom's home and then another 20 because she took over all of her uncle's items in okay. home. And there were lots of tears going through those boxes because yeah. she didn't know what was valuable or sentimental to them and she couldn't make decisions on certain things right. and she just felt so bogged down by it all. Yeah. So it's, there, there are lots of reasons to do right. an organizing project. And to tell you the truth, project. you know, unless we had a program like this, our listeners might know, not understand what a company such as yours whether it's your company or whether it's another company, mm -hmm. the kinds of things that, that you can have done you know, to help you out in the house, whether it's, as I said, whether it's basically making that environment as safe as it possibly can be, right. which means, you know, because when you have the couch and the three chairs, it's because you've had a family growing up there, and maybe there's just husband and wife, maybe there's just, um, maybe just one person is left in the house. So mm -hmm. you know, do you need all of that where you're kind of like, you know, going through a path in your own house, right? Or if you're looking at completely selling and and making a transition, a company such as yours, um, those are the kinds of things, and these are the kinds of things that when you're looking at companies, you can listen to what Deb and I have talked about, and you can sort through maybe what your needs are. Right. So, now Deb, a is, lot of people really don't realize that there are resources out there oh, to help them. This is what we and know. They this is what we know. Sometimes think, oh my gosh, how am I going to do this all on my own? I can't. Right. Well, not many people can. Right. 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 And even you know, sometimes if if you're in the process of of interviewing real estate brokers, for example, mm -hmm. when you're selling a house, that might be the first entry. Yes. Into a company such as yours, but I think what we're what I'm wanting to make sure that folks know is that if you're in your own home and you want to stay in your own home and it just seems overwhelming that companies such as yours can also have that um, that piece of the business and th these are questions that you'd want to ask yourself you know or for our listeners mm -hmm. oh okay I didn't realize that there were companies that could also do that I thought I had to wait for my daughter or my son or my neighbor or whomever um, right. to come help me out so that's right. good even um, if they're books that you're not sure about that can be packed up and go to the attic or to a kind of a right. holding area and to get them out of that bookcase that is becoming too cluttered. And right, because they also might still have that attachment. So that, right. that pre-contemplation right. phase about what do I do with that, so, whether it's that coffee mug. Yes. Don't talk to me about my grandmother's things in my basement. And I they're did, staying, Deb. I did <laughs> have, okay, I'll give you that one. I did have one woman who did a major renovation mm -hmm. and we packed up a bunch of boxes and they were shipped to, well, all of half an hour to her son's basement. Yep. 
safely stored during the renovation. I saw her recently and I said, how's it going? She said, do you know I haven't even brought those boxes back yeah. yet? <laughs> See, I thought they were so important, right? but I'm really liking yeah. Yeah. It the takes, simplicity. It, and it takes a while, it really does. Yeah. Um, but now as we, we've covered a lot here, I found this to be very, very, very helpful in understanding not only what Ship Shape Organize can do, Mm -hmm. And you can't say that three times quickly because no, it's going to come out wrong. Twister. It is a tongue twister. <laughs> How did you do that? Um, but are, are there any other aspects of um, your field or your company or anything that you want to share with us before we need to wrap up? Um, well, we can also help with the move and interviewing moving companies for you, which okay. is, of course, a lot of people don't know who to trust or where to go. Right. and and then ask the movers those important questions to be sure that they're insured and that everything, right. I's are dotted and T's are crossed, as we say. And sometimes when mm -hmm. you pack your own things, they don't insure them. They that don't box. insure them. They don't. And people don't realize until it's a little too late. Right. And um, also they don't insure, really, they'll only insure 60 cents per pound. Right. So oftentimes we encourage people to take their additional insurance. Right. and check with their homeowners, of course. And this is not to disparage any moving company because I'm sure there are many out there, but but yeah. yes. So, um, well, I really appreciate so. you coming and, and um, having some time with us well, on Living Out Loud. Thank I you. have learned something new. I just want to recap that um, companies, your company in specific, um, you do things that reorganize the, the current living space so that someone can live more comfortably and safely in their own home. Mm -hmm. um, you do some preparation for uh, getting the house on the market if somebody's choosing to sell. And right. you also help individuals as they um, transition from the home that they're living in into their new home that they'll be uh, residing in. And unpack them so the coffee maker's plugged in and the bed is made and Oh, it, it sounds and perfect. Set. It sounds perfect. But right. um, this has been great, um, and we hope that you've enjoyed us. And Deb, thank you so much again for joining us. Thank you. And until we see you again. Bye.